Hello, and thank you so much for joining us here at Our Lady of Perpetual Help as we celebrate this fifth Sunday of Lent. Let us pause for a moment to reflect on where we find God in our lives. Thank you. This Mass is being offered for Maria Schoon, Andrea Soen, and Antonio and Eugenio Diaz, Cecilia and Sigmund Williams, Bill McCart and Kenton Smith, Agnes Pasquese and the Milano, Mornini, and Caminetti families, Steve Kustra, Bob Schmidt, Arlene Anthony, Lois Powers, Cam Violet, Joseph Capitani, and Harry Taylor. This Mass is being celebrated by Father Patrick, and he is being assisted by Deacon Christopher. Let us sing together our opening song, Stay With Me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Kyrie eleison. Christ Christ
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him, saying, Master, the one that you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The di disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples asked to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they were thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am going for you that I will not be there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. 
When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews had come to Mary and seen what he had done, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. How are you this morning? Do you feel spiritually dead? You are Lazarus in the tomb. Do you feel spiritually alive? You are the risen Lazarus. In the call of Moses in Exodus, there was an exchange between God and Moses. At a certain point in this conversation, Moses asked God the question concerning the identity of the one who was sending him to deliver the Israelites from the oppressive rule of Pharaoh. When I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors sent me to you. They will ask me, 
what is his name? So, what can I tell them? To this question, God answered, I am who I am. I am who I am. This is what you must say to them. The one who is called I am has sent me to you. This answer is not clear to the human mind and so Jesus Christ concerning whom the apostle has written. Christ is the invisible image of the invisible God. Colossians chapter 1 reveals to us who God is. This leads Jesus Christ to use the I am sayings in the gospel according to St. John. In today's gospel, Jesus Christ says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do we feel sometimes spiritually dead? Jesus is the life. Jesus Christ did not only bring people back to life, but he himself was the resurrection and the life. So my dear brothers and sisters, we know we are going to overcome this situation because the devil is not the winner, but Jesus is the winner. This was not only in the past during his public ministry, but even today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Indeed, we read in Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of the qualities that distinguish living things from non-living things is the desire for life. Animals desire and preserve life instinctively, but as human beings, we have been endowed with the gift of reason, and so we desire life reasonably. This leads us to eat, drink, go to the hospital when we fall sick, and indeed, we carry out so many other activities so that to preserve life and make our lives better. Despite all these struggles, so noble as they are, our human life sooner or later comes to an end. We shall all experience the sad reality of living this earthly life, even if we want or not. In that experience of death, that brings sadness, grief, and sometimes many unanswered questions to the people who have lost their loved ones. Jesus Christ says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ, who once said, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance, fulfills this very purpose of his coming into the world. Martha believed in the resurrection at the last day, but Jesus Christ tells her, I am the resurrection and the life. The presence of Jesus Christ is therefore a life-giving presence not only to those who are still living this earthly life, but even to those who are dead, like Lazarus. Do we feel dead? Jesus is the life. While Martha looks towards the future in expectation of the resurrection, the reply of Jesus Christ shows that even in the present moment, one can already experience the resurrection as long as someone 
has Jesus Christ in his or in her life. Jesus Christ does not say, I will be the resurrection and the life, as though he were not that now, but says, I am the resurrection and the life. In our search, my dear brothers and sisters, for life, happiness, for realization, let us come to Jesus Christ, who has expressed his very identity in clear words to us when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the life that we are seeking. Yes, Jesus Christ is the joy that we desire, especially in moments like this. In having Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters, we have the resurrection and the life. Let us seek that intimacy with Jesus Christ so as to have the fullness of life, for he is the resurrection and the life. Know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life in this situation which we are facing right now. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, in this time of uncertainty and fear, may we walk in the light and the love of Jesus and with him find comfort and consolation. For the church, may each of us realize that we are not alone, but draw strength in our union as members of body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our national and state leaders, who must make difficult decisions to guard our well-being. May the Holy Spirit enlighten and guide them through the days and weeks to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our parish family, who must remain physically separated through these days of Lent, may we learn to appreciate in this time of isolation just how much we need and love one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are doing essential work and are not able to isolate themselves, may God keep them and their families safe and healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are in need, may we find ways to care for the poor and the hungry while at the same time keeping them safe and well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick of our parish, for those suffering from the coronavirus and for all caregivers, may they be comforted by our prayers and by the presence of God in their lives, especially Bray Lynch, Alice Lenart, Patricia Bickenauer, Minda Campo, Aldo Di Benedito, Jerry Babis, 
Maureen Kent, Jan Carlson, Madeline Bird, Brian Corbett, Jerry Weiland, Chris Weiss, Logan Pregovich, and Patrick Stein. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, especially the victims around the world of the coronavirus, may they find eternal peace and love in the arms of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, may we have faith to sustain us through these difficult times, and may we have hope that in our present darkness we will be blessed with your light. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us joyfully lift our voices in song as we sing together, God so loved the world. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept his sacrifice at your name. hand for the, for the praise, praise and the glory and of his name, for our Lord, good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as true man, he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Let us join the entire world to pray for what is happening in the world. As we say, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I would like to say thank you so much for all our parishioners who have been uh, watching us, who have been with us in this Mass. Remember what I have said in my homily. Some people feel spiritually dead. But remember, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Let us have hope and we shall overcome in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And let us sing together, I know that my Redeemer lives.